Hello and welcome to my blog post number seven. This is going to be my media artifact talking about the use of emerging technology in the Richard III enthusiast community, also known as the Ricardians. Um, there's a lot to talk about um, and I'm going to focus particularly on social media because I believe that that is where a lot of stuff is going on. Um, but first of all, I want to point out that using the term emerging technologies, we have to remember that what is an emerging technology for one person or one group of people um, is not necessarily the same for every type of people or every type of person or every type of um, user of technology. So when we say emerging technologies, some things might, might seem really cutting edge, some things might not. And it really does depend on the person. And this is pretty much pointed out by Dr. Stevens in our lecture, this module. So in the case of Ricardians, they've always tended to use whatever technology was available, whatever means they had to get the, get the cause out there and to talk about you know, um, Richard III and the cause and uh, exonerating him, you know, uh, vindicating him. So one of the oldest ways that they even did, I'm, I'm pointing out even in the 50s they were doing this because the way that the American branch of the Richard III Society, or one branch of the American branch of the Richard III Society started, was actually in the 50s when a bunch of actors got together and decided that, hey, Richard III had a really bad rap. So they got together and um, they posted, they made a really good um, press, you know, presence all over the world um, concerning it, put a, put a personal ad in the London Times about Richard III and his reputation, got a bunch of their famous friends involved, and they also had a radio interview in 1955. And I would argue that maybe in 1955 radio it doesn't seem like an emerging technology, but it was being used here as um, a way to get the word out. So even in the 50s, you know, people like Lawrence Olivier, which I don't know if anyone would have thought of him as a Ricardian, but apparently he had some Ricardian leanings. Um, people like Lawrence Olivier and his friend Alexander Clark were giving this interview and talking about the injustice that was done against um, Richard's reputation in history and everything. So there was a lot of stuff going on even like back in the day with recordings using emerging technologies, I would argue. And now, um, what I would say is that a lot of what's going on now has to do with social media. That is a big thing. And so, um, as we see in this Pew Research Center um, article, there is a lot of usage um, among American adults of, of particularly YouTube and Facebook. And I would, I would zero in on Facebook as one of the best ways to find Richard III community online. And there's a ton of examples. There's the Richard III Society having its own page here. 23,000 followers and more. Um, there's even smaller groups that are even more devoted and loyal and interested in exonerating his reputation and are even more pro-Ricardian than the Richard III Society, such as this one, Richard III's Loyal Supporters Unaffiliated. Um, they can get quite passionate, as you can see from their description, um, from their about this group. Um, there are so many Facebook groups, it's really quite fascinating and fun to look through the social media presence on Facebook. Um, again, we have groups where his innocence is defended, People coming together, more than you would probably think, who are still interested in this cause. We have things that are more general about Richard III and the Wars of the Roses um, as in a bigger picture. I really like this. This this one seems really neat to me. Richard III, how did you become a Ricardian? Tell us your story. That's pretty neat. I I'm, I'm really appreciate that. Um, I have various, various groups. And um, I also have to say... Now, one of my favorites is one that is just more fun, and it's called Richard the Third Enthusiasts Not for Prues, and it's kind of um, having a good humorous take on everything with memes and, and funny pictures and things like that, and they're just having fun, and I really appreciate that. So um, 
one of the things we can see with this Facebook usage is that people who use it, the age breakdown of people who use Facebook, um, you can see that the largest group that say that they use it are between ages 30 and 49, and also large are the groups that are um, older in age than, than that. And I would say that probably a lot of Ricardians fall into this age range. And that makes sense for the amount of Facebook groups that there are. But it's groups like this one that make me wonder if there aren't also younger ones that are younger, more youthful feel to it, um, more irreverent feel to it. Maybe that there are maybe younger people who are also interested in this. But I mean, definitely there are a lot of younger people on Facebook as well. So um, YouTube is a great place to find information, but I feel like as a community platform for people to actually um, get together, it's not that great. Um, blogging is one way that a lot of Ricardians can find each other, connect, and share. You can find a whole range of which of the third blogs. Um, this is an interesting one. And then on this blog, you can see that there's actually a folk concept album that someone made of Richard III's story. So there are people who are even making emerging technology in the field of music about him. And um, here we go to one of the blogs I used for my community-based resource. This is Matt Lewis's blog, and he is now going to be the chair of the Richard III Society. And I think there's a ton of ways that Ricardians can connect, particularly through blogs like this and the comments section of blogs. Um, they're very live with like debate, controversy, discussion, and you can learn about Ricardians themselves and their stories through there. Um, I would say that Ricardians are definitely lifelong learners. So, um, so, as you see in this Pew Research Center article, most, most Americans regard themselves to be also lifelong learners. 73% of adults say so. And 74% of adults are what this article and the writers of this article call personal learners. That is, they have participated in at least one of a number of possible activities in the past 12 months to advance their knowledge about something that personally interests them. So I would say that Ricardians are definitely lifelong learners. And one way we can see that is just, just for an example here. Um, let's look at this here. Um, this project, which is ongoing now by members of the Richard III Society, the Missing Princess Project. It's pretty ambitious. It's been undertaken partly by Philippa Langley, um, the, one of the people most, um, most active in discovering the king or helping to find the king's remains. So she's an, she's like a very prominent Ricardian and this missing princess project is trying to, um, involve Ricardians of all stripes to look through archives and, you know, do a cold case history investigation basically, right? So, one of the things that is really useful for this is paleography, which is a knowledge of how to read old documents and 15th century documents and things like that. So, um, the Richard III Society actually has been offering a course on paleography. And I know this might not seem like the most emerging technology, but it has been offered by email or by post. And basically, it's how Ricardians show themselves to be lifelong learners. And uh, if we look, for instance, at some key new digital platforms, which in 2016, at the time of the writing of this article, had been not widely known by the public, we see here the Massive Open Online Course, or MOOC. Um, apparently, in 2016, 80% of American adults did not have much awareness of these. But there is on offer... Uh, a massive open online course or MOOC um, for Richard III and it's called England in the Time of King Richard III and there is a lot on offer here from the University of Leicester it's free it's perfectly free and um, you can see all sorts of stuff that you can learn about here from you know from the upper classes and the battles 
to the lower classes and the peasantry and what life would have been like for them to what kind of food would have been, you know, would have been consumed in at that time and um, just all sorts of stuff that one can explore. And so there's definitely this MOOC option. Books, literacy, and printing would certainly be something that would be interesting to um, Ricardians. So there are a lot of resources out there having to do with um, the use of emerging technology in the Ricardian community. And this is barely, barely touching the tip of the iceberg, really, honestly. And I don't want to take up too much time and go on and on and on and on. But um, definitely to summarize, social media use is really a big thing. Um, Facebook is a huge platform for the Ricardian community. There are various groups that are active there. Um, there are blogs of all kinds, websites of all kinds, of course. The internet presence of Ricardians is quite prominent. And um, YouTube is there with a lot of resources, but it's not as live as, um, as like a, a community building type of thing. And there are MOOCs available for Ricardians. And um, there's just a lot of stuff out there. Um, you know, pretty much any kind of social media provides opportunities, there are forums, there's all sorts of things going on. So thank you for watching and um, take care.